guys? It's Steven here today. I really don't know where the fuck this is coming from, but I'm getting some Eureka straight from God. Holy shit, dude. It started off with this weird mind thought of like the shit that I would say to Conor McGregor. I don't know how this kid, I think uh, I was just looking back the other day because uh, me and my friends sometimes watch fights. Uh, UFC fight night at like this like sweet venue and I was just thinking about like some of the shit that I would tell someone oh yeah um, so last time um, I brought up this concept called uh, iron wall where I noticed how like essentially um, precursor to the fight it seemed as if like my mind just like perceived this like epic, epic technique that went into uh, the whole perfect offense is perfect defense version of combat, right? And I dubbed it Iron Wall for some reason because it reminded me of uh, some of the martial movies that really maintain this aspect of the, the guard being a complete top-down and lateral to lateral uh, defense block movement. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and so then like, I started thinking about like what that meant in terms of physics and why it was such a deadly fucking stance and the reason why Wing Chun or some of the Chinese-based arts dominated for like Decades and decades and decades. They were literally based on this principle. And so in my mind, as I'm thinking about this, I'm like, how do I go about it? And uh, I started thinking about like shit like um, uh, point of impact and how it all goes into basically the what I dubbed as uh, the impact clash force where oftentimes people just like focus on the moment of impact but they don't think of the clashing at elements that come respective to that right so then like um i started getting into it and i was just like rapping it and then the funny i was like bro there's so many things that are tied to this i may as well just fucking record it right so this is typically your punch, right? This is your fist balled up. So if you did this, and the concept of the iron wall is essentially that if you maintain or if you ensure that any um, any point that comes into contact with an external element is done in such a way to where the two vectors are dot producted meaning um, they're completely perpendicular to one another, you're always going to be in, if you want to put it, um, a perfect plush, perfect flush situation where as opposed to having to worry about um, the reverb that comes from the moment of the impact clash coming back to either affect you in one way or the other, whether if maybe you're throwing off axis and then you're throwing out of form, causing maybe like a fracture or some like hairline bone touch to occur, or like another maybe um, weird like heart <laughs> impulse jump to be felt, to even like a cerebellum check to be vibing off of your dome. The flushing causes it to where there is no reverb because 100% of the wave is transferred onto the element and then what should have been reverberated back onto your system gets grounded by the fucking force of gravity, right? So in this, I like, uh, I use the, the typical laws that everyone knows for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and then two is an object always um a, an object at rest stays at rest and then an object in motion stays in motion 
right? So for every action of the zinc on the opposite, that's literally what I just described, the tension force. Or I mean, like, uh, yeah, the impact, the, 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 pre the reason for, my reasoning for why there is this presence of such a thing called something sort of sort of an Im impact clash force that essentially causes everything that occurs at this moment to be felt in its own individual way, right? And then on top of that too, um, going back to the second one, it, tra it travels in such a way that you have to consider the ramifications upon the entire system due to it, right? So to go even deeper or to explain it as quickly as I can, because I'm actually surprised it's coming out so well in such a way, because like when I was thinking about this, it was just like this, there was like an entire elaborate exhortation. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. God, it's beautiful, like fuck. Numbers are beautiful, like fuck. If you don't believe me, just look at titties. <laughs> but uh, because of this, right? Um, if you think about it, the reason why uh, the the addition of uh, essentially throwing at an angle came about was because of this. When one essentially just throws, um, um just without thinking about gravity, then they're more likely to take on the burden of the impact clash force onto themselves. So the first the first law that it action equals reaction essentially lends into um, the, the discovery of the nature of how um, two elements when coming into collision, will stay has two equal and opposite elements. Like you'll be able to track both of the entities even after the moment when they can join or come together, right? So this is a uh, um, point of contact means outside object, right? And so uh, that translates also into why there is such a thing as things that occur in between the moment of collision, right? Like, as the punch travels through the air, it's actually meeting other external elements, whether it's air molecules, whether it's debris, whether it's hard elements, right? For one reason or the other, or whether it's, as I called it in my vision, unknowns, spelled U-N-O-W-N-S. What up, Mr. Ketchum? <laughs> So like there, there are these real things occurring in that. And so by that, the original force that is thrown is not gonna be the same when it hits or when it comes into collision with the external elements. For every subsequent element or object that it travels through before the point of contact, the force gets, uh, if you want to call it, uh, I don't want to use the word modulated, but it gets mutated, right? Maybe it loses energy, maybe, maybe it increases in magnitude in one way or the other, or decreases in period, right? All these things that change it, that change its nature, even as it's traveling. This is what engineering, especially this turn of the century focused on when it speaks about wave propagation, right? What happens to the waveform created as it travels or propagates through the system, right? The second L, the second law speaks to, as I mentioned, uh, the gravitational turn of the planetary axis, right? So what I mean by that is that there is such a thing as an axis that works on a lateral sphere only. And then there's such a thing that works on a um, vertical sphere only, right? And the conjoining of the two causes a third axis to come about, which essentially makes it to where anytime something is thrown, there is a spin that occurs because it's done or felt 
across both axes, right? And this is what we've come to know as the z-axis, for example, as we just like, instead of, or if you want to put it, element x. <laughs> so what this means is that uh, this punch or, or this, yeah, punch or kick or an elbow will be felt, or even a block parry, will be felt on both of these axes. And what that means is um, there is going to be uh, a contribution from the force of mass of the element or the, the moment at which you find yourself in space in relation to time along with the gravitational turn or if you want to put it the geopolit the geo uh what's the word geoclimactic if you want to put angle elevation and um amplitude at which you find yourself on the planet right if you want to put it uh there's this beautiful way of representing it if uh you ever seen the app google earth like if you download it on your phone it's literally speaking to this right based on where you are there's different axes at play and different angles at play this is kind of why i think um personally we sussed out the importance for something to be completely cyclical based and not so much tied on the sheer aspect of numbers so the radian system because at some point like it, it doesn't um 300 or 160 or 80 degrees doesn't mean anything when you're just constantly constantly rotating right so fast that like maybe um you can't even get a bearing for what zero is but if instead of just worrying about where zero is on a static basis you just split the rotation in turn in fours this is one fourth this is two fourth this is four fourth then the spin takes a completely different nature right so there's always a contribution of these these forces as well that tie into the overall uh, both impact force clash coming from your end and the impact force clash coming from the object's end right you're always everyone's always feeling that tug and so what happens is um, in the same way, um, when you guys meet, there's also going to be a, fe a feeling of the tug at that moment itself, both before, both in between, both at and both after, right? So the beautiful nature of this or the beautifulness of this means that you never have to take on the burden all by yourself. As I mentioned, you can just let it propagate it to its natural end by bringing it to ground, right? And so that's how you do a perfect check. Now, back to iron wall. If you think about everything, then from that standpoint, that means that you can fucking headbutt someone and murder them simply by maintaining that aspect of ensuring that whatever you hit what with is in that straight line or what I use iron wall fucking type of uh, place, right? Right here, right? Right here, right here. <laughs> All these things, it opens up such a world of possibilities. And this isn't just applicable to combat, but like engineering has itself, if you think about it, is based on the principle of a flush, sound, and well-grounded base case. Whether it's a brick, whether it's uh, a fucking, the, the foundation, even if you're in this, you're, it's like built on sand, right? Whether it's um, even in just uh, the aspects that come into creating a waveform, right? From the get-go, you wanna ensure that your pin Right, because it's essentially taking something and striking it on something. 
and then essentially creating a circuit by which that thing or sound or whatever it is can just circulate freely and freely and come back right in a way that as it goes through it's essentially providing power to whatever element is needing it right or giving energy to whatever is in need i'm so glad about how this came out um, there's so much more i could add to this but this was just perfect i was thinking like drawing entire pictures and then god is like watch this holy spirit magic <laughs> uh, anyways hope you guys got something out of this and as always swag the fuck out oh and I forgot to add um, the reason why I use the word impact, impact clash is because basically the best way I would put this or explain this is Lord, thank God for the fucking video screen cap where you're fully able to project this shit in like frame by frame. But the perfect fucking uh, picture for a gun is like what you'll see is something like uh, you'll see first the. Oh shit, I think my shit's glitching now on me. We're experiencing technical difficulties, and we'll be back with the broadcast shortly. Boop. Message okay. <laughs> uh, oh no, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Shit, hold on. But basically, uh, in a gun, like the perfect picture, first you'll see uh, the click right but then you'll see what ha what seem the, the impact of the click and what it is it's like a uh, uh, the sling back of the barrel right and then you'll see the clash which is like the explosion and what I liken it to is like a waveform that goes right and depending on how sound the German the engineering of the gun is, um, it will actually either travel to a point that's specific or will just keep traveling all along the gun onto the fucking subject itself, right? So you'll see that it'll be like a and it'll, you'll, it'll go and then you'll see it like propel itself back and then the bullet firing. So you'll see each of those frames in motion and that is the pure and true multi-dimensional representation of this force right if it was just like a, a force and it and then an impact then there wouldn't be all these respective elements that show themselves afterwards right so every when everything is flush basically you just see uh you see the the, the cause for the clash or the impact Maybe the gun fires, and then, like, everything stays the same. There is no reverberation, whether laterally, talking about the sling back barrel, or uh, horizontally. I mean, whether horizontally, talk about the sling back barrel, or uh, vertically, talking laterally, talking about the fucking j -j 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 -j, right? Which is the combination of uh, Y and Z ver vertex space vector spaces right so you don't see that at all you just you just see it go and then you may see it like uh jut back uh slightly but most of the time it stays uh very stationary right but then when things are not flush you see it just come you see every single individual axis that is at play in the creation of this moment and that's how you can tell whether you have a dot product, where there is 
a perfect fleshing together of the different forces in a way that there is a normalization and thus harmonization of the the waveform created afterwards or you have a cross product where there is a, a conjoining of forces in a way where the different essences of them have not integrated in such a way that they're homogenized and thus their differences can still be felt across so some cool shit and actually depending on the context it may be what you want so but as i always say at least it's good to be in operation of thought i am aware if you're aware about it it's so much better because now it's conscious <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Give me my lightsaber, nigga! <laughs> Anyways. Oh, and I forgot to add um, the reason why I use the word impact, impact clash is because basically the best way I would put this or explain this is Lord, thank God for the fucking video screen cap. Where you're fully able to project this shit in like frame by frame. But the perfect fucking uh, picture for a gun is like what you'll see is something like uh, you'll see first the. Oh shit, I think my shit's glitching out on me. Experiencing technical difficulties, and we'll be back with the broadcast shortly. Message okay. (laughs) Uh, Oh no, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. Shit, hold on. But basically, uh, in a gun, like the perfect picture, first you'll see uh, the click, right? But then you'll see what ha- what's seen the, the impact of the click. And what it is, it's like a, uh, uh, the sling back of the barrel, right? And then you will see the clash, which is like the explosion. And what I liken it to is like a waveform that goes, right? And depending on how sound the German, the engineering of the gun is, um, it will actually either travel to a point that's specific. Or we'll just keep traveling all along the gun onto the fucking subject itself, right? So you'll see that it'll be like a and it'll, you'll, it'll go and then you'll see it like propel itself back and then the bullet firing. So you'll see each of those frames in motion, and that is the pure and true multi dimensional representation of this force right if it was just like uh, a force and it and then an impact then there wouldn't be all these respective elements that show themselves afterwards right so every when everything is flush basically you just see uh you see the 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 cause for the clash or the impact maybe maybe the gun fires and then like everything stays the same there is no reverberation whether laterally, talking about the sling back barrel, or uh, horizontally. I mean, whether horizontally, talk about the sling back barrel, or uh, vertically, talk, laterally, talking about the fucking ju 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 right? Which is the combination of uh, Y and Z ver- vertex space, vector spaces, right? So you don't see that at all. You just, you just see it go, and then you may see it like uh, jut back, uh, slightly 
but most of the time it stays uh, very stationary, right? But then when things are not flush, you see it just come, you see every single individual axis that is at play in the creation of this moment. And that's how you can tell whether you have a dot product where there is a perfect fleshing together of the different forces in a way that there is a normalization and thus harmonization of the, the waveform created afterwards. Or you have a cross product where there is a, a conjoining of forces in a way where the different essences of them have not integrated in such a way that they're homogenized and thus their differences can still be felt across so some cool shit and actually depending on the context it may be what you want so but as i always say at least it's good to be in operation of thought i am aware if you're aware about it it's so much better because now it's conscious. <laughs> Let's go. Give me my lightsaber, nigga. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys got something out of this. And as always, swag the fuck out.